Welcome. This video will be about the Frieden Model STW8 Automatic Calculator. This calculator came out in the 1950s and features a fully automatic set of functions. This calculator is mostly mechanical, uh, about 98% mechanical. The last 2% is a motor, a run capacitor, and a series resistor, and a microswitch. And the rest of this is all mechanical. It's an absolutely fascinating piece, and I recently repaired it. It was in non-working condition. A lot of stuck arms, a lot of stuck levers that needed to be freed up of the old grease, cleaned, and lubricated. But now the calculator is working great, and I have had some fun learning how to use it and its various functions, which is why I wanted to make this video series about getting in depth about this calculator because there's a lot of little things in the manual that probably a lot of people don't know that you can even do with electromechanical calculators. So this video is going to be just the basics, the layout, what all the keys do, and then we'll get into in the next video specific functions and the different options uh, and what all of these little switches here do which are absolutely awesome and like we're going to divide the calculator into a few major sections. This section here is the multiplier section, and this is where you'll do most of the multiplication. You have the main keyboard, and then the main function keys grouped to the right hand side. On this carriage here, we have an upper display and a lower display. We have the ability to lock the displays, clear them manually and electromechanically uh, using carriage clear button which we will get into. This is the carriage. This is where you will see your answers. Instead of printing it onto paper, it displays it in these two displays. We have the upper display or the accumulator, the lower display also known as the counter. These levers here are for clearing the counter and accumulator with the bottom lever here only clearing the counter and if you slide the top lever it will clear both the counter and the accumulator. Now the carriage clear button down on the main functions clicks these for you when you want to clear. The carriage clear will also shift the carriage so that it is fully justified to the left so that you are ready to do an addition or a subtraction, which are probably the most used things, as well as multiplication. Division is the only function that starts kind of at different places based on the decimal resolution you want. We have these little knobs here. These are called twirlers. These are for manually setting digits in the accumulator. We have the decimal places here, which can be slid back and forth to set decimal places there are more than just one. You can set five decimal places in the accumulator and you can set three decimal places in the counter here. These buttons along the bottom of the counter are the a number of decimals you will have when you do the automatic division. If you want the most resolution you hit the zero which will clear all the decimals and we'll set you at this fixed button that doesn't move, which is seven decimal places. That's the maximum resolution of this calculator. The 10 digit version has two more uh, decimal places that you can go. These are ganged together, so when you click one, it will pop out the other, and you can set whatever number you need for your particular occasion. This lever here and these two levers can also be used to lock the clear functions so that you don't accidentally erase what's inside the accumulator or the counter. The accumulator is split into two at this marker here. This is the right hand section. This is the left hand section. This lock here is for the left hand section. This lock here is for the right hand section. And this lock here is for the counter at the bottom. And it stops from being cleared. If I hit the carriage clear, it will not clear the bottom, it will only clear the top. This is the main keyboard. The main keyboard is where you will type 
a majority of the numbers you'll be adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. You have 1 through 9 on each column, and along the bottom here, these unmarked keys are essentially 0, or resets. If I type a number in, it holds it down and locks it into place. If I want to reset that to this column here to a 0, I can simply push this button here and it resets it. This button also doubles as a lock for this column. So if I pull up on it, what it does is it locks this row and I'm unable to clear it or change the number, but it does not affect any other row. That's very handy if you want to only lock a portion of the keyboard. Underneath here we have the decimal places. Now you can see I already have one enabled here. I can put as many decimal places as I want by rotating this little thumb wheel. There's a rod with a painted yellow stripe that comes into view of these little windows. They put this handy little bar down here, so if you want to reset all of the decimal markers, you simply slide it and it resets all of them. These are the main function keys. We'll start with the simplest ones and then we'll go into the uh, more complicated functions. The simplest ones are going to be addition and subtraction, as well as carriage shift and the clear keys. We'll start down here. This is a keyboard clear, as you saw when I was showing the main keyboard. This resets the keyboard. Now, the one next to it is the carriage clear. This clears the upper carriage. If I click it, it will clear the upper carriage and lower carriage as long as they're not locked. The carriage shift does what it says, shifts the carriage over by one position in either the right or left direction. Addition adds to the top display total, subtraction subtracts from it, and with every addition or subtraction, the counter will either count up or down respectively. Up at the top here, we have keyboard lock. It does what it says, locks the keyboard, so you cannot touch it, you cannot clear it, uh, and it basically works the same as the individual column locks, but it locks the entire keyboard from being cleared or entered. The add key here, in its down position, will reset the keyboard after each cycle. If you leave it in the up position here, it will not reset the keyboard uh, after each cycle. It will leave the keys pressed. That's handy if you want to reuse keys on the keyboard and you want to add multiple of the same number. You can just leave it and just hold down the addition key and it will continuously add whatever number you have on the keyboard. Now we get into the more interesting functions. We have the two division keys. Why are there two division keys? Well, there's something called negative division. That's what Frieden calls it. It's a little misleading. There's nothing negative about it, except for the fact that it subtracts the quotient, the answer of the division, from the lower display. This comes in handy uh, in more complicated equations like grand totals, which I will get into in the more um, extended techniques video. To do a normal division where it just puts the quotient, adds it to the counter, you push both keys at the same time. The enter dividend button. This is what you push to enter the number that you will be dividing. If you wanted to divide it 50 by 2, you would enter 50, click the enter dividend button, it will automatically put it into the top display for you at the predetermined decimal place as set by these decimal marker buttons. And then you type in the number you want to divide by, the divisor, and you hit both of these keys and it will go into division. The division stop lever is kind of like a handbrake in case the division gets out of hand and you divide by zero and it keeps going forever, you can push this up and it will stop the cycle with the key pressed down. The manual says that that's four equations kind of like that where they keep going for a long time. And so what this will do is once it gets to the last digit in the counter, it will stop even if there are more things. This is the multiplier section. This is where all the multiplication happens when you're using this machine. You have a keyboard and several function keys and levers here to do various different things. This is the display 
where the numbers show up. If you type a number in the keyboard, it will show up in this little display. This model holds up to eight digits in the multiplier section, whereas the STW10 holds 10 digits. You can actually see there is space for two more digits. We have some main keys, the multiplier key, and the multiplier clear key. The multiplier clear key is for clearing this display. This will not clear the main carriage up top, it will just clear this display here. Then we have the multiplier key, and what this does, it starts the multiplication cycle. Once you've typed your number in, and you've typed your number in the main keyboard, which we'll get into when I show how to do multiplication, this is the button you'll hit to do multiplication. This automatically clears the unlocked portions of the carriage and starts the multiplication process and will put the multiplier you typed in here into the lower display and the answer will appear in the upper display. On the left here we have negative malt and accumulate malt and what these are are alternate versions of the multiplier key here. Negative malt, what it does is instead of clearing both of these don't clear the carriage. What they do is they use what's already in the carriage and they either add or subtract the product of the multiplication cycle to the top display. If you had 50 in the top display and your product of your multiplication was 25 and you hit a Q malt, it would add 25 to the answer and give you 75. If you use negative malt, it would subtract 25 from the answer, which would give you 25. At the top, we have three levers. We have the repeat, the non-entry, and the counter control lever. These levers are extra functions to uh, really increase the versatility of what you can do with this. The repeat key allows you to hold and store a multiplier that you've typed in. If I type in one, two, three, and pull the repeat key down, it does not let me, it physically locks me out of entering other numbers in or clearing the multiplier. If you were to hit multiply, it will multi do the multiplication cycle and put that number back up for you so that you can use it for the next one. The non-entry key has to do with the lower display. As you saw in the carriage, there is an upper and a lower display. What this does in the down position is it locks the lower display from being added to or subtracted from in multiplication, addition, and subtraction. The only mode that can add or subtract into the counter or lower display is the division, both positive and negative division. The counter control reverses the lower display or counter um, so that when you do something instead of adding to the display if you do an addition cycle instead of adding one for the one addition cycle you did it will subtract one whereas in the up position it counts normally it counts up and counts down normally this inverts the counter okay that's part one of the series uh, I just wanted to get into the major sections what all of the buttons do um, I, there's not really a video that I found that goes over in depth of what each of the levers do. Um, I had to find the user manual. There's a great video by Curious Mark. I am trying to remember to link it in um, where he has the SCW10 and his is in very, very nice condition. This one had a little bit of a rough life. Uh, some sticker residue I can't remove without ruining the paint and a couple blemishes here and there and this is actually worn smooth. It's actually a crinkle coat that's been worn smooth by someone's hand. So it's a lot of use. Thoughts to be expected. These were not meant to be shelf queens. These were meant to be used. So stay tuned for the next video which will get into actually using the calculator and how to set it up for division and multiplication and where to set the decimal places, how that works. And then there might be a third video uh, which goes into more extended techniques, let's call them, where uh, we'll go through some of the more complicated problems in the manual um, and how to set it up into grand totals, that kind of fun stuff. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.